Hola muchachos, welcome here. For today's video, I'm gonna talk about making money from home, online, via social media. When I first started like the whole YouTube social media world, I didn't even know you could make money, nor did I for the longest time. But for the past couple years, I've really put a lot of time and energy to build my brand and to make a solid income from home. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about where you can start, how to start, I'm gonna be talking about different social media platforms and what really you can make off of them, some more, some definitely. Definitely less. I'm going to talk about the different ways that you can make money and just kind of an overall helpful advice tip video for anyone who is already in kind of the social media YouTube realm and makes money online or someone who doesn't know where to start and hopefully this will help you get started. Thank you very much for joining me for today's video. I truly do hope this is really helpful for you guys and I also want to give a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I truly believe if you are wanting to get into social media, making money from home, growing your business or your brand, Skillshare is where you should start. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators, for people that want to, again, grow their business. They have over 25,000 classes and these will go over design, marketing, business, illustration, animation, however you want to go about growing your business. I focused in on the marketing courses. The class I really enjoyed and recommend is Becoming an Instagram Influencer by Sean Dalton. This class does a superb job at talking about how to create authentic content, how to gain a solid following as well as the best way to properly monetize your work. Premium memberships will give you unlimited access to courses. You can go about through the website and see what you want to do, what you want to cover, and what you really just want to grow your knowledge in. And this isn't just for people that are wanting to start a business. This is for people that want to increase knowledge towards a hobby, just in general, or increase creativity as well. You have the ability to join over 7 million other creators and you can do so for free for the first two months. Click my link in the bio, Skillshare is giving away a two month free trial to anyone who signs up using my link. After that, you're looking at about 10 bucks a month. You have the ability to join groups, work with other people that kind of have that same mentality and just kind of be surrounded by other people who speak your language. You know exactly what I mean. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and continue with some of my tips and tricks. First thing, you need to realize what you want to do. What do you like to do? For me, I started out on YouTube doing like makeup and beauty. Time went on, that really, oh, my interest in makeup and beauty really went down and everything else kind of went up pertaining to ethical shopping, sustainability, mom stuff, minimalism, vlogging, organization, cleaning videos. We did a whole like 180 and it was a great idea. Since doing that, my business has definitely grown. My income has grown and I am now doing something that I really, really love and appreciate to film, edit, and put forward to you guys for you guys to watch. So that's step one, figure out what you like. Step two, how do you want to do it. There are so many different social media platforms that you can go ahead and easily create an account and start going, but you have to realize which one is going to work the best for you. I, in my personal opinion, totally unbiased. Everybody needs an Instagram account if you want to grow a business. If you're a YouTuber, if you do Pinterest boards, if you make clothing, if you're a mom vlogger, if you bake pie, you need to have an Instagram account. And if you make pie, please let me know because I really like chocolate pie. I don't really like any other pie but chocolate pie. Anybody else? I'm not a pie person. Chocolate pie, completely different story. Or any kind of like mousse pie. Anyway, think of your Instagram as a portfolio. The look of it, the different things that you post, the descriptions, the pictures, all say something about you. And that's like the main gateway into the realm of social media, YouTube, brands, very important. So whatever you're doing, have an Instagram page. I'm gonna go over Instagram in a little bit here because it's really vital to know how to use Instagram. Some people just use it willy nilly, which is fine, but you can use it in a very specific way that's gonna benefit you and your business the most. There's also YouTube, there's Twitter, there's Pinterest. There's a lot of different sites. I'm gonna go into detail about a few of those in a little bit here. Next, and you know what? I really can't stand when all these people like youtubers are giving advice being like you know what to start Just pull out like your MacBook computer and start filming No, you're gonna get nowhere if you're filming on a computer if you're filming with your phone. I'm serious You're not really gonna get anywhere times have changed ten years ago filming on your MacBook filming with your flip phone It was totally normal nowadays welcome to competition You're competing with a lot of different people for their 
interviews, for their likes, for their attention. It's no longer what it was in 2009. You need to have good, solid, rich content for your videos. And I do really mean quality wise. If you're curious what I'm using, I will link my Amazon storefront down below and you can check out in the filming equipment area everything I use from my mics to my cameras to my lenses to my ring light, my computer, etc. etc. Nowadays, you need to be professional, consistent, and well edited. You need to do this for a following. If you don't think you have to, you're kind of joking yourself. This is not me wanting to sound harsh. This is me just being completely and brutally honest. All these people that think they're gonna make it using a MacBook Air to film and just a one take shot and putting it up online, you're not gonna get too far. And if you wanna get far, you need to do more and invest more into your business. That's that's just how it is. Next, let's talk about YouTube. YouTube is a great video online platform that you just share your life or whatever else you want to talk about. For me, I share a lot about my life. I do baby videos, mom videos, I do cooking, I do cleaning, minimalism, organizing. I do a lot and I love what I do. So if you're going to be a YouTuber, you need to upload one to five times a week. That's a pretty broad scale. Some people do just one, some people will do five or more per week. I'm a pretty happy medium, two to three times a week, that's a pretty solid number for me. To make it on YouTube, again, consistency is huge. You can't take weeks off on end and just be like, it's fine. Your views are gonna go down, your subscribers are gonna go down, and then your income is gonna go down. Consistency is so key. Even if it's just one upload a week, that consistency is gonna make people continually come to you. If you just kind of go like this all over the place, you're telling people they can't rely on you, and why would they subscribe to someone they can't really rely on to upload on a decent schedule? Next again, good quality. If I can't see you, if everything looks dim, if everything is fuzzy, the audio is horrible, no one is going to watch, let alone subscribe. Every video you put out says something about you and it advertises for future videos. Next, solid editing. So many people do editing and they just half it all the way. Editing is so important. Even if you're, honestly, if you're like me and you're not very good with a camera, Editing is gonna save your butt and it's gonna make everything look highly professional, highly well done. Some people get editors and hire editors. I haven't done that. I do it all by myself because honestly, I don't trust anyone else with my footage or just how I do things. Like for me, I like being a part of the whole process. It's very busy and maybe one day I will have to hire an editor, but for now, I'm soaking this up. Solid editing is so key. I use Final Cut Pro. You may think it's a little bit pricey for an editing software. There are some free ones you can always check out. Next, your videos need to be fun. They need to be exciting, they need to be inspiring, they need to be real. Too many people do these videos and it's very dull and it's boring and it's like, I can hardly sit through this. If you have a friend, a sister or whatever and you're doing videos for the first time, have them come over, sit and watch one of your videos that you have edited and just ask them what they thought. If it's painful to hear, sometimes you just need to hear it. I like to keep my vlogs and my videos exciting and fun and cool. Different angles, I like to keep it raw and the way I hold my camera, grab it, different things people may want to crop out of their videos. I usually like to keep in my videos just a little bit more organic and I appreciate that. Energy is huge too. Like the people that seriously, they talk like this in their videos and it's just really like boring and I don't really understand why anyone would want to watch a video, a video like this because it's depressing. There needs to be, you don't have to be like vibrant and crazy. Everyone has different personalities, but there needs to be something about you or your editing that makes people want to come back. That's huge. Next for YouTube, Eve, okay, here's the thing. Oh, there we go, my throat's getting dry. Thumbnails and titles are everything. Even if your video sucks, if you have a solid thumbnail and title, you will still get people clicking on that video. You'll probably not get people to stay and watch your video because it's that boring and then you lost a subscriber and a like and elongated video watching time, but you did get a view. Thumbnails and titles are so key. Don't do clickbait stuff. Like so many people overdo the clickbait and it's like, why are you doing? Don't do the clickbait, be real, but make your titles more interesting. Something like this, I once uploaded a long time ago, a wife talk video and it was pertaining to intimacy with your husband. Instead of titling that video, wife talk episode four, titling it, Christian girl talks about sex, 
will do way better. It's that kind of idea and not so, not so much like the sex part, but it's wording things in a certain way that'll make people want to click on it and then giving them such good content to watch that they'll want to stay and subscribe. I'm going to move on to Instagram and at the very end of this video, that is when we'll be talking about earnings and how you can make an income. Next, moving on to Instagram, you need to upload one to three times a day a post. As for stories, you can go as bananas as you want to. People like stories on Instagram. It's a little more real, raw, organic. I really changed all my stories to be like real. This is me filming, no filter. I used to just do like edited filtered photos because I'm OCD and I like everything to look a certain way. But over time I was like, this is too hard to do. I don't think people really appreciate it. I'm gonna keep my posts very like cool, calm, themed out, and everything else in my stories is where I can be real and raw and organic with you guys. Consistency, again, decent quality, again. Also a theme, people do the theme on Instagram because it just looks a lot more pleasing to the eye. Having a certain color scheme, whether it's bright, dulled colors, neutrals, black and white, kind of the same looking filter on everything, more cool tone, more warm tone, more orange. I've seen it all and it's all pretty fantastic. I edit my photos through Lightroom. You can edit your photos on whatever. Even if you're not very good at photography, like me, editing will save your butt, just like with YouTube videos. If you know how to properly edit a photo, that's gonna really save you and make your photos look fantastic. If you feel like you can't edit, go ahead, download Lightroom and look at some presets. People sell their presets and you can use their presets to better your photos and then over time maybe you can kind of figure out how you want to do your photos. But people wanting to gain a following and do really well that like aren't celebrities, I encourage them to have a theme. A kind of cohesive look between all their Instagram photos, very pleasing to the eye. People are gonna wanna come back for that. Next are hashtags. Hashtags are so important. If you wanna gain a following, like, this, use hashtags. Hashtags is just the hashtag number symbol sign and a word will follow that and that word is gonna take you to other related posts. Like if I do a thrift store haul, I will say hashtag thrift store haul, like if I've posted it. Now anyone that looks at thrift store haul, or they're gonna find my photo. If people are interacting with it a lot, they're commenting, they're liking, they're tagging, it's gonna go up in that hashtag trending feed. Your post will be more visible, more people are gonna see you, follow you, like you. A bigger following really does mean a bigger income from brands. <laughs> Something in my eye. Also, be detailed with your hashtags. Don't just be like, hashtag blogger. There's like 10 million hashtags for blogger. Good luck trying to compete with any of them. But stay true to your location. I am a Vancouver blogger, so I'll do hashtag that. Doing that, I've gotten a lot of different invites to events around here, local sponsorships, free admission to different places. So being more specific with your hashtags are really gonna help you out. Also stay active. You need to stay so active on Instagram. You need to be liking and sharing and commenting and posting. That's gonna make your account look very active and in use because it will be. People like people that are consistent and people are going to be more apt to follow people that are. I am someone that's had three kids and I have never taken a break on Instagram, on YouTube. I am always consistent. Every single week, I'm always uploading different things. You will not see me gone for a long period of time because this is my job and I love it so much but people are relying on me to be consistent there is such thing as taking a break but for me a two-week break is really unnecessary for me and for my followers and viewers and it's something that I just don't plan on doing lastly I just want to talk over all kind of social media accounts on all your accounts you can find when you get the most traffic it can be day to day it can be hour by hour my highest traffic days from Sunday to Saturday is all of them. I get an equal amount of views throughout all those days. My chart isn't like this, it's pretty steady. But for time of day, that's when it really counts for me. I get the most traffic between 10.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. That's firstly when I'm always gonna upload a YouTube video because that's how it is on my YouTube. And the same actually reflects on my Instagram. So that's when I'm gonna post onto my Instagram some stories, but usually always a decent like Instagram feed post. Always check with your activity of your viewers because if you're posting something at 5 a.m. in the morning and no one really looks at it, you're not gonna get any traffic or notice that you actually did post something. So be very specific the day that you post and the time. Lastly, we're gonna talk about money. There are a ton of different ways that you can make money online. First is AdSense. I make the most money through AdSense and that is through my YouTube channel. AdSense is the thing that Google uses to put ads on YouTube videos. Google will take their cut 
and then we take our cut from that. I make the most money from YouTube and I really do enjoy YouTube as a whole. So I wanna stay on top of YouTube and as consistent with it as possible so my income doesn't go like this but stays very consistent over the board. Next is partnerships. You can partner or collaborate with a brand. Like for me, on today's video, I have been collaborating with Skillshare. I'm sharing with you guys that I use their platform and that you should too. So they are a brand that is sponsoring me and collaborating with me on this video. I work with lots of brands that I love. It's pretty much them giving you a certain amount of money for you to tell your audience about them. Never collab with anyone who will firstly only do product in exchange for like something. Bad idea unless you're very small, like you're just beginning, always charge at least something. Also, don't work with someone just because you want money. Only work with people that you would firstly put your money towards, that you really support, and that you appreciate. Work with brands you appreciate. If you don't appreciate a brand and they wanna work with you, say goodbye and move on. This looks good for you from like your viewer's point of view. Your viewer's point of view, yeah. <laughs> and this is you staying true to yourself. It's not all about the money, even though it is very crucial in this kind of social media world, making income from home and such, but don't lose your values for money. It's not worth it. There's also commissions. A lot of time people give me a coupon code and say, we're gonna give you some money back if people use your coupon code. Honestly, nine times out of 10 I say no, I just want my followers to use the code and get some money off of something but a lot of the time if I don't know some sort of company says we see that you have been using our product a lot you tag it in your Instagram stories if you send out this coupon code Sarah Therese 1000 gold star then you will get 10% commission back off of all the sales that's a great way to make money in my many years of being on YouTube I think I've actually done that twice and I actually don't ever keep the commission I always give it away Anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was just a little bit of good info for you guys to just have sink into your brains. This is a good place to start. I highly recommend everything that I talked about. Having an online business is serious, and even though it's serious, it can still be very fun and cool because trust me, it is, it definitely is. It can take some time to get somewhere, to build something, but if that's what it takes to get you there, it's all so worth it. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you guys subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.